Okay, here we go again. I thought this topic had been put to bed, but it keeps waking up. So I just need to address it again. I'm talking about the idea that carrying a pistol with a round in the chamber ready to fire is extremely dangerous and it is reckless and you shouldn't do it. So uh, <laughs> in today's video, I'm gonna address that. Maybe we're coming in from a little bit different angle because of a comment I had on a video recently. So we're gonna talk about that and talk about some ways that you can make sure that you are safely carrying your pistol with a round in the chamber. That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me as we once again beat what I thought was a dead horse. So, as I said very recently, on my I got a comment on my most viewed video, Three Concealed Carry Mistakes That Could Get You Killed, and which is again pushing back on, on the, the one of those mistakes that I listed that that I get the most pushback on, and that is carrying with an empty chamber, carrying a pistol with an empty chamber. And this one had a little bit of a little bit, little bit of statistics in it that I thought were completely wrong, so I, I felt like I need to address that. Um, but I get a lot, a lot of pushback on that, that it is completely dangerous, it is negligent, it is irresponsible, that it, it is just completely wrong to carry, walk around with a loaded gun that you're putting yourself and everybody around you in danger. So, I did a little bit of research. I thought we would we would we would talk about this, what I found out as far as is that accurate, and then let's talk about real briefly some things that you can do to make sure that you are not being negligent or irresponsible, and you're able to safely carry a loaded pistol. But first, a big thank you for today's sponsor, the folks at Hog Holsters, and right now, Hog Holsters is celebrating 15 years of making holsters. Now they haven't been hog holsters for 15 years, but they've been making holsters for 15 years. And it's in honor of that, for until the end of March, 2023 only, they're, they're gonna offer a 15% discount to the viewers of this video by using the coupon code, sorry, that's the dog, HOG15, H-A-W-G-15. At the end of March 2023, you can go back to using your regular old coupon code survival on purpose to save 10% off, but you get an extra 5% in honor of their 15 year anniversary for making holsters. And Hog Holsters is the holster I use every single day. We're gonna take a look at, a little closer look at it later in the video, but I just want I want to go ahead and get that out there until you can save 15%. Hogholsters.com, Hog15, H-A-W-G-15 for the uh, coupon code. So let's talk about uh, accidental discharges because that's what that's what was um the comment said first of all let me be real clear and in my opinion in most people's opinion there's no such thing as an accidental discharge that is a negligent discharge anytime a, a pistol dis a firearm discharges when it wasn't intended to it is due to somebody's negligence in my opinion and i think the opinion of most people um, so guns don't just go off and if you have a gun that just goes off, it is negligent for you to not get it fixed or to carry it. So that would be, even if, it, if you're carrying it goes off, it's your negligence, okay? So anyway, this comment said that, uh, again, it was pushing back against carrying loaded guns. And it said, I, I, I've got some notes here I'm reading. It says that as many or more people are killed or injured by accidental discharges than by uh, shootings by strangers, by bad guys. My brain immediately goes, there's no way. That, that makes no sense whatsoever. Um, just, just, there's just the gang shootings in Chicago in one weekend are almost more than all the people killed annually from um, unintentional discharges, negligent discharges. So but I did some research. And so when you Google this up on Google, all the results are going to be from anti-gun people. I was talking about how horrible it is. So let's talk about that. The environmental, the, I'm sorry, the educational funds to stop gun violence a decidedly pro-gun control group, says that nearly 500 people annually die from unintentional firearms injuries. This is out of a total now. They don't tell you this right there. You have to dig through this. But this is a total of approximately 45,000 to 50,000 total deaths annually that are that are from, from the use of a firearm. That's like 1%. 1%. I don't think that qualifies as, as many or more. So I think that the fact that there, there's just people dying all over America because somebody's carrying around a loaded gun is completely false and that narrative is posted is put out there by people who want to um, you know control guns right so but let me just be honest I think admittedly nearly 500 preventable deaths from negative negligent or incompetent use or ownership of a firearm is 500 too many 
So there's no excuse, in my opinion, for, for these deaths. None. Zero. So how do you, as a responsible, competent firearms owner, prevent this? So first thing you can do is always, always, always practice the basic firearm safety. And that's not just on the range. That's any day, all the time, wherever you are in the rest of your life. And number one, number one is never, ever, ever point your firearm at anything or let your, let, or let your firearm be pointed at anything you're not willing to shoot. Number two, and this is a huge one, a huge one. This is probably responsible for as many or more negligent discharges than anything. And that is keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on target and you have made the decision to fire. Okay? <laughs> I know, I know. You think that's that should be a no-brainer. So, Number three is always treat all guns as though they're loaded. And there's, there's no, and this is no particular order on these. That's, that's number one for a lot of people. But in other words, don't, don't, don't think because well this gun's not loaded, I can handle it carelessly. I can, I can ignore these other rules. No, treat every gun as though it's loaded, and all these rules apply to loaded guns. So, so therefore they apply to all guns. And number four is always be sure of your target, what is beyond it and around it. So those are the four safety rules that are pretty much universal. And I would say that. It, for, for the number one reason, again, for negative discharges is the whole finger thing. Don't put your finger on the trigger. But the other reason is other things can contact the trigger, right? So maybe it's not your finger. Maybe it's um, something in your pocket or something in your pants or something in your purse or whatever. So that's why the second thing I think you can do to make sure that you are not going to have a negligent discharge, negligent negligent discharge is use a good holster that protects the trigger and I personally personally think that the best holster nowadays this is the 21st century is a kydex holster because kydex is solid it's not going to bend over flop over it's not going to wear out and get loose and flop around and get in your in your trigger guard and the holster that I use and have used for five or six years now every day that i've been through multiple dynamic training classes with and everything else with zero zero issues is the hog holster from hog holsters like we talked about it a minute ago you can say 15 percent on this right now and a couple things i really really like about this first of all it's very slim very comfortable this is the most comfortable holster i've ever tried second of all i want you to listen to this that is this you see that snap that snaps in and this thing covers the trigger guard another thing i really like about it is uh, a lot of negligent discharges happen when you're reholstering a firearm or you're putting a firearm back. So if you have to take this off to go to the bathroom or whatever, uh, this this ulti clip just comes off like this, and the whole thing goes onto your pants, just like just like so. Can you see that? So it goes on your pants behind your belt. It doesn't clip on your belt. People say, "Oh, I need the support, whatever." I promise you. <laughs> It's never an issue. I've been wearing this holster daily for years now. Absolutely no problems. No problems with the retention of the holster on my pants or the pistol in the holster. Just hog holsters does it right. But whatever holster you choose, it needs to be a good solid holster that's going to stay on your pants and it's going to protect the trigger. I know Magnum P.I. would stick his, his 1911 in his, in his back and he's all good because he's got it on safety or whatever. That's a bad, bad idea, especially with most modern striker-fired pistols because the safety, one of the safeties is in the trigger. And if that trigger is depressed and pulled, then it'll go bang. So use a good holster. And I, I can't think of a better holster than hog holsters. So 15% off right now, too. So be a little plug for John. So let's use a good holster. Number three, secure your guns. Don't leave your guns laying around. I get comments about carrying with a round in the chamber. They say, no, I don't think that's safe. You shouldn't leave a gun laying around. Never said anything about leaving it laying around. We're talking about carrying it. If it's not on your person or in your direct 100% contacts and control, it needs to be secured. It needs to be in a safe or in a lockbox where uh, nobody else can get their hands on it. That's why you don't leave your gun in your car. Don't leave it under your seat. Don't leave it in your glove box. That's the number one place somebody's going to look for a gun if they break into your car. If you're going to have to leave it in your car for any reason, buy yourself a little lockbox with a cable that goes around your, your seat brackets or whatever. Lock it up. It's not perfect, but it'll stop most smash and grab people. So just lock it, lock it, lock it. Make sure your weapons are secure. And finally, number four. Chuck Norris is the reason Waldo is hiding. Get some good training. Training builds competence, which builds confidence. And training is not going to the range 10 times a week and, and, and shooting, shooting. That is gone shooting. Training is 
something that you do under the watchful eye of a competent instructor so you can learn what to do. They can, they can point out any mistakes you're making that you might not notice. And you're not reinforcing bad things. And then practice is when you go and you practice the things that you learn in training and you improve those skills and you get those reps in. So tra training will, will absolutely make you a more competent, more confident, and safer more responsible um, firearms owner. So those are the four things. And hopefully, maybe this horse is dead now. Maybe, maybe, maybe this, this rumor is back to sleep. But I'm telling you, um, there, there are not, not, not more deaths and injuries from irresponsible people just carrying a gun around with a loaded chamber than there are from criminals or from negligence. So don't be negligent. Be responsible. And um, make sure as you exercise your God-given Second Amendment right to protect yourself and your family that you do so responsibly. So I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival is not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time.